What do they really want? Let's turn to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 3 and 18. But we all with open face beholding in, as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord. What do you hear there? What are the verbs? Behold, reflect, become. You see that? See that's how it works? You behold, you reflect, and you become. It's that simple. Romans 12, 2. Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Isn't that what we want? What does God's glory deserve? What does it deserve? Reverent obedience? Mere acknowledgement? Who? Who? Turn to Exodus 25. Twenty-five and eight, and it says, "Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them." How close does he want to be? Matthew five and sixteen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Ooh, ooh. You hear that? How do we give God glory? Let your light so shine before men. Is this my light though? No, it isn't, is it? It's God's light. It's reflecting from me. It's reflecting from me because I beheld it, right? And now I can reflect it and become it. That's what we're talking about. Romans 3.23 what does that say? so if all have sinned that means none of us are higher than the other are we? We're on the same level playing field. Anyway. So nobody has anything to boast in but Christ. Amen. That's it. Jesus Christ. Period. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. 10 and 31. So this brothers and sisters, is something I struggle with right here. This verse. This verse bothers me. Okay? I'm going to let you all know that. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all the glory of God. You want to know why this verse bothers me? Because I have a terrible battle with coffee. I struggle with coffee. I love coffee. I've, I've, I've laid it down. But I, I lust for it. I guarantee you. I drive by Dunkin' Donuts, I crack the window and I go, <laughs> and I drive by the place. Uh, I do. I'm telling you serious stuff. And, and I think this really, this, this is really important because why did God say this? He didn't have to qualify whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all the glory of God. He qualified whether you eat or drink. Now, I'm not trying to put anything on you guys. I'm just talking about myself. Whether you eat or drink. You know, when I got my son his first car, and only his first car, <laughs> it was an old Ford Probe. I don't know if 
remember what they looked like for which. But I can remember saying to him, be careful driving that car. You know, out on the road, be safe. And whatever else you do, be safe. But what did I say? I said, be safe in that car. Right? Because if you're not safe in that car, the rest of it isn't going to matter, is it? It's not going to matter at all. If, if we're going over and anybody needs to leave, feel free. Okay, because i got just a little bit more and I'm going to go for it. Because this is sad and i got nothing else to do. But if you got to go, go ahead. Okay? Don't, don't feel like you can. Anyways, I, I want to read something to you guys. And this, this is from my favorite author. And it comes from Councils on Diets and Foods. Okay? It says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who overcome as Christ overcame will need to constantly guard themselves against the temptations of Satan. The appetite and passions should be restricted and under the control of an enlightened conscience. That the intellect may, that the intellect may be unimpaired. The perceptive powers clear so that the workings of Satan and his snares may not be interpreted to be the providence of God. Many desire the final reward and victory which are to be given to overcomers, but are not willing to endure toil, privation, and denial of self as did their Redeemer. It is only through obedience and continual effort that we shall overcome as Christ overcame. The controlling power of appetite will prove the ruin of thousands when, if they had conquered on this point, they would have had the moral power to gain the victory over every other temptation of Satan. But, to, but those who are slaves to appetite will fail in perfecting Christian character. The continual transgression of man for 6,000 years has brought sickness, pain, and death as its fruits. And as we near the close of time, Satan's temptation to indulge appetite will be more powerful and more difficult to overcome. That, that's, that's powerful. Turn to Matthew 15, 11. Because whenever somebody says what I'm saying, they go to this verse. Okay? 1511. It says, Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, but that which cometh out of the, out of the mouth, this defileth the man. Now, people will use this verse and say, Well, that means you can do eat and drink and do anything you want now. Right? But what is that really, if you, if you study this out and you continue, because I'm going to cut it short, I'm not going to take the time to do this. Jesus goes in 15 and he says, Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us the parable. And Jesus explains the parable to him, and then in verse 20 he says, These are, these are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. That's what the discussion was about, eating with defiled, defiled hands. Because the Pharisees and the scribes were looking at Jesus and his disciples because they didn't wash their hands, which was tradition to the elders back in the day. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. Amen. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defileth the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Which temple ye are. First Corinthians 6 and 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Not you are God's, but they are God's. Psalms 51 and 17.
51 and 17 says, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. And wrapping up, Isaiah 43, 7. Isaiah 43 and 7. Everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Created, we are created to display God's glory. That's what we are created for, brothers and sisters. And that's what that verse says. We are created to display his glory. His last day remnant people brothers and sisters, right here. That doesn't mean the whole church, but it certainly means people in the church. Today I present to you the pattern, Jesus Christ. Let us worship Him in our closing song, Mine Eyes Have Seen the Glory, 647. Amen. Sabbath in Jesus' precious and holy name.